Ooh, I might have burned this a little bit. It's okay. Is it me? It won't know. No. <laughs> Hey, it's Nia. I'm back with another recipe drop, and today I'm making burrata with roasted asparagus, brown butter, hazelnuts, and I'm gonna serve it with some toasted sourdough bread. It's delicious, it's super easy. Let's get started. So the first thing I did was actually preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and now I'm gonna prep our asparagus. So I have six, you could use like four to six, really depending on how much asparagus you want. And then I'm gonna cut them into about two inch pieces. They're gonna shrink in the oven, so cut them bigger than you'd think. I'm gonna place them on this Heston sheet pan. And give them a nice drizzle of olive oil. And a little bit of salt. These are gonna cook until they're nice and soft and a little bit browned in some spots. And give these a nice toss. When you roast asparagus or really any vegetables, you wanna make sure not to overcrowd the pan. So leave them with a bit of space around each asparagus. So spreading them out helps with browning. If they're too close, they'll steam and spreading them apart just helps to have air circulating around them. Before I put these in the oven, I'm also gonna prep my bread. I like to serve this dish with sourdough just cause it's my favorite. And I especially like a whole wheat sourdough. You could toast your bread in the toaster if you want. Um, I like to do it in the oven just because we already have the oven going. I also like to do thick slices. You could also serve this with like focaccia or pita bread. What do you like to eat with burrata? Focaccia is a pretty good one, yeah. honestly. I feel like a burrata just neat, but burrata really does win well to having something that's like crispy. Yeah. Like you really want a crunchy crunch. Exactly, I agree. Okay, so we got four nice thick slices. So I think I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of olive oil on them. You don't have to do this if you don't want. But again, just kind of helps to crisp them up a little bit more. Sprinkle with some salt. And guys, this is a very quick recipe, which is really nice. It's perfect for like an appetizer or if you just have to throw something together for people coming over for dinner. So these are gonna both go in the oven on the middle rack. So the bread is gonna to toast for about eight minutes. So I'm gonna set the timer for eight minutes and then after the asparagus are gonna cook for another few minutes as well. So now while those are in the oven, I'm gonna chop up my hazelnuts. I don't wanna chop them too small. I'm just gonna do like a rough chop. So I wanna have like some small pieces, some bigger pieces. I feel like having the variety and texture is really nice. And if you don't like hazelnuts, you can use pistachios instead. I think that would be really good. Or you can leave them out entirely or really just use whatever nut you want. I just feel like hazelnuts and brown butter goes really well together, even though you're already getting that nuttiness from the brown butter. Also asparagus. I feel like asparagus and hazelnuts are really great too. I also just love hazelnuts, so that's why as well. Got a nice like few different sizes going on. So now over a medium heat, I'm gonna actually toast these hazelnuts. So you could use a small skillet. Um, I'm just using this because I like a small pan or a pot, I guess. And I'm just gonna add all the hazelnuts and we're gonna toast them until lightly toasted. But nuts is one of those things that's so easy to burn. Like I feel like you step away from the stove for like, I don't know, literally like a minute and they're burned. So you wanna keep a close eye on them. I do that a lot with milk too. Like I feel like if I'm heating up milk, I'll look at the milk, I'll step away and then I look over and it's like, coming all over the sides. I'm just looking now for like kind of a golden brown color and also waiting for them to really smell like nice and toasted. That's when you know they're done. Smell is like the best indicator for knowing when something is done. We got a little browning, not that much yet though. We still maybe got another minute or so. These Hessen pots are really nice. They're stainless steel and they conduct heat really evenly, which is really great for any type of cooking. Yeah. Okay, starting to smell. Nice and toasted. I think we're almost there. And they don't have to be like super round because they're probably not gonna get there right now without browning, or without burning, I mean. Okay, I'm gonna say these are good. So heat off. Okay, so one thing too now, 
We're gonna actually brown the butter in the same pot, but you wanna make sure to wipe the pot clean. If these little hazelnut crumbs are left in the pot when we brown the butter, they're gonna burn and they're gonna make the brown butter taste burnt as well. So we have our toasted nuts, you wanna see? They're not super toasted, or they're not super browned, but they smell really good, they have a little color. Let's check on the bread. Mm. Actually, thank you. I'm actually gonna flip them. Try not to burn myself. So I flip them, I'm gonna add another few minutes. So now I'm gonna brown some butter. I have two tablespoons salted butter. Um, it might seem like not that much, but really because there's already all the dairy and the fat from the burrata and olive oil from the asparagus, we don't need a ton of butter. A little goes a long way here. So to brown butter, you wanna just heat it over low or medium low. And again, it's another one of those things that can go from brown to burnt super quickly. So you wanna make sure to keep an eye on it and to stir occasionally. And what's happening when the butter is browning is that the milk solids are sinking to the bottom and they're caramelizing, browning, a little bit of Maillard reaction going on there. And that's what's gonna give you that really toasty, nutty, caramelized flavor. So this foam that you see on top, this is the milk solids or at least the really white parts and those are gonna to sink to the bottom. So while this browns, again, make sure to like kind of keep an eye on it. Take a lemon and I'm gonna zest it. Ooh, this one's nice and sharp. I love that. Yeah. Lemon zest. I love adding lemon zest to recipes. It just adds such a nice brightness. So, ooh, this is kind of a fun grater. It makes them like pretty big, which is nice. I'm gonna use half of a lemon to squeeze on top later too. So we have that. Okay, let's check on the bread. What do you think? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, bread is done. I'm gonna give these asparagus a little shake. Could use another minute. So you'll get to a point with the brown butter where it starts to foam a lot. And after the foaming subsides, that's when it's gonna to start to brown. So here, if I move away some of the foam, you can start to see some of the brown spots. Cool. I think we can actually start to assemble. So we have our lemon zest. We got our hazelnuts. We're now gonna have our asparagus. Mm, they look so nice. So you have a few brown spots but they're still super green and look really nice and tender. So now that we have our brown butter and our asparagus and our bread and our hazelnuts, I'm gonna plate. So I have this nice Casafina plate. I love these. So I just have an eight ounce burrata. This has been left out at room temperature, which is really important because you want it to be really soft. And I'm gonna just br gently break this apart and kind of spreading it out onto the plate, letting all the cream in the inside kind of come out. And kind of use a little spatula to distribute it a little bit more. I love burrata. Oh, I love burrata, so good. <laughs> now I'm gonna top it with everything else, basically. So my inspiration for this dish was actually my aunt. Because every time I go to hers in Sweden, she loves to make these really like light and easy appetizers, especially with burrata. She uses a lot of burrata, a lot of mozzarella. And I've always thought her recipes that she makes are perfect for like when you're gonna feed a few different people. I'm gonna go in with my hazelnuts. And if you feel like this is too much hazelnut, then you don't have to add it all. I really like them for added crunch. Okay, I'm gonna go in with drizzle on the brown butter. It was also so funny when I was little, um, I had a family friend who would always tell me that the correct and proper way to eat asparagus was with your fingers or with your hands pinky up. So we did that a lot growing up. 
Okay, in with a little bit of lemon zest. This is a really, really good spring recipe or like any time you want to have like a dinner outside or something or in the summer. You could serve this with chicken. You could serve this with, I don't know, more vegetables. It's a good appetizer or it's a good foundation for really any meal. So lastly, I'm adding a little bit of Aleppo peppers and these are a little bit spicy and are also a little bit sweet. If you don't have Aleppo peppers, you can use chili flakes instead or also just not, eat, not use it. And then a little flaky sea salt and probably some pepper too. One of the reasons why I really like this recipe is because it's super adaptable. Um, it's one of those things that's very like feel as you go, if that makes sense. Method cooking rather than so much of a measurement thing. Adding our nicely toasted bread on the side. Yum. I'm gonna do a little pep pepper too. There she is. Our super, super easy spring appetizer. Only a few ingredients. Really good and goes well with so many different things. I have Julia here. She's tasted this many times before. <laughs> so let's hope it's as good as other times. I never get sick of retasting things in this kitchen. Just love burrata. Should I just break off a piece yeah, of bread? Yeah, just break off. Okay. Okay, mm. perfect. Yum. Mm. The hazelnuts are a good touch on this Thank dish. You. Okay, I have to get the perfect oh. bite. Asparagus. Okay, ready? Mmm. That did look mm. like a perfect bite. <laughs> so good. <laughs> I never get sick of it. It's so, it's so like, springy and fresh and like thank you i feel like i just want to eat this sitting outside on a 60 degree day on the patio hey that's what it was developed for i know asparagus is obviously like seasonal to spring mm -hmm. but isn't burrata also a seasonal thing anna do you know someone who used to work here dominique shout out she'd always be like like burrata's seasonal to a certain time of the year, even if it's like exported from Italy, like it's, you should really only buy it at a certain that. time, but. That's I have interesting, no idea. I've never heard of that, but like it kind of makes sense. Like I feel like burrata you want to eat it in like spring, summer, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Oh no. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Good job, great mm. job.